Okay, hey guys, here is finally my review of the DTEC SEF 15 by 12 inch um, double elliptical search coil for the um, Garrett Ace 250. Now, um, this coil has been manufactured for quite a number of different um, um, metal detector um, makers. However, I've only used this for the Garrett Ace 250, okay? So everything that I'm telling you now applies only to the Ace 250. Um, now, I've had this coil, as you know, you might have seen part one, the, uh, the intro and my air test. I was pretty positive on the coil at the beginning and um, really looking forward to using it. Um, you might remember there were three main reasons why I got this coil and what I was hoping for. That was one, to increase my depth. Two, to increase the search area to be able to get through the fields faster. Um, three, to kind of reduce some of that iron masking that I might have been getting um, from the uh, the larger elliptical coil um, by using the, uh, the, it's somewhat a double D configuration. Now, I can um, gladly say that it succeeded in the first two, um, but it failed miserably in the last one. Um, Let's get into the review. I've got a couple of things to tell you. So first of all, the uh, a couple of points to tell you about it was that um, um, the search area was incredible. You can really make a lot of ground with this, and if that's what you want to do, if you want to get through an area fast, this is the this is the one. This is the one to do it. It's got a very very wide search range, and you you know even just by overlapping a small amount you can really cover some ground with it and um, that kind of um, brings me to the second point and that is the weight of the unit um, or the coil should I say it's only 600 and something grams I forget it's basically exactly the same as the Garrett 9x12 um, so for me it was nothing different um, the, the way it's set up I thought that possibly I might have some problems you know catching on this edge here um, catching it on the grass dogs, bits of whatever rock, it had no problem. Um, I'm not sure how it worked, I think it's because it's just so wide, it, it, it's like a stable plane that shoots over, over the surface. Uh, so I had no problems with that. Usability is fine. Um, the pinpointing factor was the next thing I wanted to talk about, and that is, um, like I mentioned in I think my, uh, my first run with it, number 10, um, I didn't mention that, did I? To give this somewhat uh, a little credibility, I've now used um, I've now used the coil for um, it's about ten hours of hunting now. So I've got about ten hours of hunting with this in uh, that includes both on the field and in the orchard. So a couple of different environments, um, some more trashy than others. So I got a chance to to give it a good run. 10 hours is, is, yeah, maybe some people argue not enough, but you get a good feel after 10 hours of, of hunting with it. And uh, that was quite a few times out. So um, check out Hunt 10, 11, and 12 for the corresponding videos using this, um, my previous hunts. Okay, that gets me to the search, uh, the pinpointing. Sorry, I was on pinpointing, right? Pinpointing with this was okay um, on the uh, side to side, but forward to back was horrible. It was really, really useless. Uh, it never really dropped off properly, it just had a pretty, really continuous um, hum and it would drop off like a little bit past and it, you'd never actually know exactly where the unit, where, where the target was. Um, so this side, this side to side was fine, so all you do is you drop, um, jump around 90 degrees and, and pinpoint 90, 90 degrees side to side and you can, you can narrow down where it is. This was okay. The problem with pinpointing on uh, this coil I found is that this is what's called the double elliptical coil. So it has two individual coils and the processor runs through the center section like the double D configuration. However, it's not a true double D and I actually had a problem, I'm not sure if anyone's experienced this before, but on very shallow targets, um, it would actually pinpoint, so if here was the target, it would pinpoint here on the center of the first coil, ding, like, so you would get the, uh, and you'd have full, full pinpoint, then it would go off, and then it would come in again, and you'd pinpoint on the center of the two coils, then it would fade off and pinpoint on the center of the ne next coil. And this drove me crazy, because often you would get big pieces of, like, trash just under the surface, 
and um, it would pinpoint three times, which was a little confusing. I, I wasn't sure if there was one target or more. The way to beat it, I learned, was lift the coil up if you've got one of these things. Just raise the coil off the ground and then pinpoint, and you get a much clearer run through the center field. Okay, so that was a fix. Pinpointing is doable, not a problem. Um, now, they claim on here stable operation is one of the um, you know better ground balance, more stable operation, deeper in the ground, better pinpointing. I don't know about better pin pinpointing, but they claim stable operation. This is true to some extent. Um, the coil itself, you could run on max sensitivity on the unit, go along the field, and you have no problems. It doesn't force, it runs really smoothly um, when there's nothing there, when you've got nothing in the ground, when you just connect it and put it up to max. The problem is that, and this comes to where my this comes to my next point, is that this thing forces its head off at iron trash, like it really, really does. Um, this was the biggest qualm I have with this. It's the biggest issue I have with this coil. Um, you know I'm searching here in Germany, so in Germany, metal detecting in Germany, we've, we've got areas that are just covered in World War II shrapnel. Um, you need to be able to identify this. You want to identify iron, you need to identify the trash targets, anything that's rusting and been in the ground for 80 years. I want to know what it is before I dig it. Um, now with the 9x12, I found that, yes, shrapnel often rings up high, however, with the 9x12, it would always flick back into, it would jump between a high signal around, say, the 10 cent, 25 cent mark, and then hop back into iron, and you would get the clear, low tone to say, hey, you know, it's good, it's good, but don't dig it. That was that's kind of how I would look at it. Ring, ring, oh, what's that? Low tone, don't dig it. That was just how shrapnel is, right? You've got to avoid it. This one, ring... It rings up every time super, super high on the um, the iron trash, and the problem is it doesn't flick back to tell you that it's iron. It just gives you a great sounding signal and says dig, 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 and um, you end up digging like a bunch of trash, right? Um, you might have noticed, actually, this is one of the points down my, down my little list I've got here of things to say. The quantity of the items that I'm finding, that the actual number of things I've found in the last three hunts has declined pretty rapidly. And um, compare that to what I was finding in the in the first, you know, ten hunts, and you'll notice like I had a big, you know, this is, this is my little board here. I had the board full of stuff, right? Um, in the last three hunts, it's been very difficult to even show you what I've found, but the time that I've put in is basically the same. A couple, you know, most of my hunts are only a couple of hours each run. Um, maybe th two to three hours, you know, like this. Um, this, to me, was a bit of a, a sign that I wasted a lot of time with this digging trash. It just loved the trash. And the other problem with this, not only was it that it didn't, ex it didn't let you know that, that it didn't let you know that there was iron content in it. Um, it also, every time you came across iron trash, it rung at six inches. Every time it rang six inches, it didn't matter whether it was right on the surface or whether it was right, like, you know, 30 centimeters down. This drove me crazy. The depth indicator was never accurate on trash targets. So, number one, it rang up high. Number two, you never knew where it was, which became a treasure hunt trying to find it. Um, I often would see six inches and ringing at 10 cents um, to 25 cents. And this is, for, for me, is a copper kreutzer. This is a good copper kreutzer. You have to dig it. Um, so you start digging, and often I found like it would say it's six inches, and I'd say, okay, six inches, that could be could be a coin, that could be good. Um, I'd dig it up, um, get the plug out, find it's in the plug, okay, check it again, it's in the plug. So I'd start pinpointing through the plug, and it was right on the surface. So, and it was junk, big piece of iron junk. And uh, this drove me nuts. Other times you would dig the plug and it was still in the hole, so you'd dig out a bit more, still in the hole, dig out more, and you'd end up being at 30 centimeters and you've got a piece of iron. And it told you that it was, you know, at 15 centimeters. So this drove me crazy. The, d the depth indicator on this, um, number one, it rings up high on trash. Number two, it doesn't tell you where the trash is. That drove me nuts. Okay, so iron falsing was the biggest down, downfall on this one.
um, I wasted a lot of time. So the other thing that I wanted to bring out, mainly just to wrap up, was the sensitivity issue. You might have noticed I mentioned in the last video that I've, I just kind of put two and two together that I haven't found anything small. I haven't been finding small targets. Now, um, you definitely lose sensitivity. I, I'm 99.9% .9 sure you lose sensitivity with this and you don't find small objects. It's great for hunting coins. Coin shooting with this is, is good. All the coins come up. If you don't want the hammers and you don't want the fine coins, because I am 99% sure that this does not work well with um, with fine coins, um, the the very thin, very thin ones, um, at least at any depth, that's for sure. Um, so, like I said, sensitivities down. I've found less smaller, finer items. Um, more bigger, chunky items. It does love the iron, as I mentioned. Depth indicator wasn't good. Um, I didn't notice any real outstanding depth increase, to be honest, from it, um, over my 9x12. It did maybe get a little bit further, um, but it was nothing outstanding, like, wow, I've never found a coin that deep before. Nothing like that. So overall, it's a um, it's another coil for the uh, for the arsenal, <laughs> for the um, for for different environments. Now this just did not match where I was. I don't think um, any area that has trash, this is useless, absolutely useless. If you're going to an area that's clean and you're just looking for coins, I would say that's your that's your guy there. But other than that, for general hunting, this is not suitable on the ace 250. Um, you waste a lot of time digging trash and um, that uh, the, any any gain you get in the surface area of the hunt uh, of the uh, of the search coil the, the range increase is completely lost by wasting your time on your knees digging up trash. So um, that's something to consider. For me I'm I'm iffy on it. I'm, I'm to be honest I'm not so happy with it myself. Um, but I'm giving you my experience, like I said, after 10 hours of hunting with it, and um, um, that's on the Ace 250. I don't know how it works with the other machines, that's not what I'm telling you about. Okay, so overall it's a great coil for the, uh, for the range and the depth, if that's all you want. But if you, um, uh, if you are going to areas that have got a little bit of trash, be careful. Um, the price of the DTEC SEF here in Europe is 139 euros, and um, for the S250, and it's also the exact same price, 139 euros for the Garrett eight and a half by eleven double D coil, the one uh, David Sunrise Solaris just picked up for himself a couple of months ago. Now, from what I hear, Dave is loving his, um, and he's even mentioned in his comments that the uh, he hasn't noticed any sensitivity loss or anything like that. So my um, my um, money would be on the uh, Garrett Double D over the DTEC SEF. Okay, that's um, my thought on the um, SEF 15 by 12 inch. Um, hope that helps anyone out who's thinking of buying that. Just consider the search environment that you're going to be using it in, and and that will help you out. All right. Anyway, thanks for watching the review. If you have any comments, suggestions. Um, Anything you want to, maybe I'm doing something wrong, um, let me know and, um, and um, if I've missed anything out, I'll explain it in the comments, okay? Thanks for watching and um, stay tuned for some more videos, okay?